Okay, the following table may help you write conclusions for a hypothesis test. Uh, if you uh, reject the null hypothesis, and this is actually, you know, where was the claim? The claim could have been the null or the alternate hypothesis. Well, if you reject the null hypothesis and the claim was the null hypothesis, then, there's not, then there is enough evidence to reject the claim. If you reject the null hypothesis and the claim was the alternate hypothesis, then there's enough evidence to support the claim. Because you rejected the null, you must be able to, to show or support this claim here of the alternate hypothesis. If you do not reject the null hypothesis and the claim is the null hypothesis, there's, then there's not enough evidence to reject this claim because you didn't reject it. If you reject the null hypothesis and the claim was the alternate hypothesis, then there's enough evidence to support the claim because you rejected the null, you're able to show the alternate. Okay, so this is uh, one way of thinking about the problem. Sometimes you'll see problems written like this, and, and that's usually where you know there's a claim of something, and they're they're getting into uh, you know putting the claim beside either the null or the alternate. And again, the claim could be the null or the alternate, and you just from the reading of the problem, you can see determine if the claim is the null or the alternate. Uh, now, this is actually I think more important here. This is your summaries. Okay, let's say you're running a right tail test. If you reject the null hypothesis on a right tail test, then you would say at the whatever alpha level you ran it at, then you were able to show something is significantly greater than what was claimed. Okay, like uh, the sodium content thing. Uh, if we ran a right tail test, then if we reject that null hypothesis, we would say at the 0.05 or 0.1, I think is where we were able to sh show that on that uh, sodium problem in the last example, we would say at the point one alpha level, I was able to show that the uh, sodium content is significantly greater than 230 milligrams. Okay. Now, if you do not reject the null hypothesis on a right tail test, there's only one thing that changes right here. This changes to an unable. Okay. You're unable to show the alternate. So uh, when we ran that problem at the 0.05 alpha level, uh, we were unable to show that the sodium content was significantly greater than 230. So we would say, at the point, uh, at the 0.05 alpha level, I was unable to show that the uh, sodium content, or the average sodium content per bowl of cereal, is significantly greater than 230. And that was at the 0.05 for that one. Now the same thing is true with the left tail test. If you're doing a left tail test and reject the null hypothesis, then you'd say at the whatever alpha level, you are able to show that it's significantly less. Okay, not greater, but less if it's a left tail test. And if you do not reject, then it's just that you're unable to show that uh, whatever you're dealing with is significantly less than the claim. Now on two tail tests, uh, if you reject the null hypothesis on a two-tail test, then you summarize in the direction of the rejection. For example, let me show you this here on this example. Here is the problem we did earlier as a right-tail test. And I changed the number a little bit here on the number of uh, bowls of cereal. I made it a bigger uh, sample so I could reject it at the 0.1 alpha level. Notice here, I'll show you something here. If, uh, if we make this sample size the same as we did in the previous video with the two-tailed test, exact same data here as right here, we won't reject the null hypothesis. Because what a two-tailed test does is it splits your alpha in two, and you have two rejection regions. So when you're dealing with a 0.1 alpha level on a two-tailed test, that puts half of that 0.1 alpha, or 0.05 of it, right here, 0.05 here, and 0.05 uh, of your curve is here. So it doesn't uh, give you as much extra as you, as you would like. So the test statistic didn't fall into the rejection region when I run a two-tailed test on this exact same data. But on a right-tailed test, see here's 10% of your curve, okay, on a right-tailed test. On a two-tailed test, this plus this makes up 10% of your curve. So there's only 5% here, so you don't get a reject the null hypothesis on this one. But I wanted to show what would happen if we did get a rejected hypothesis. So let me change this to a 70. Let's say we sampled 70. And as I said, if you sample, the more and more you sample, then this could be closer and still get a reject. So now we do have a reject, uh, the null hypothesis. And you see it's just barely, that test statistic is just barely bigger than 1.64. I could have also rejected it if it was a little bit less than negative 1.64. Anything less than negative 1.64 or anything greater than positive 1.64. But my point is 
that when you reject a two-tailed test, and I just barely did, it's really, really hard to tell here, but I'll tell you what, I'll even change this so we can see it. Let's make this like a 233 uh, right here. And if I do that, then you'll definitely be able to see that that test statistic is way up there. Now, where did we reject it? We rejected it on the right-hand side. So even though it's a two-tailed test, don't summarize it by saying, I'm able to show that it's significantly different. Go ahead and summarize in the direction of the rejection. We rejected it on the right-hand side. And if you can't see that well, let me just go ahead and graph the right-hand side for you a second. Let's just graph it from 1 to 3. So right there is the area. In fact, if you want to go farther out, let's go from 1.5 to 3. So you can see this right here. That, that test statistic falls in the rejection region on the right-hand side. So the summary is going to be that it's significantly greater. Even though it's a two-tailed test, we would say at the 0.1 alpha level, I was able to show that the uh, average sodium content was significantly greater than 230 at the 0.1 alpha level. Now I changed this a lot. I changed this number to 233 and I increased my sample size. But uh, my point is you summarize in the direction of the rejection. Now, um, and that's what this is about right here. If you reject a two-tailed test and the test statistic is positive on the right-hand side, then you would say at the whatever alpha level, like ours was 0.1, I was able to show that the average sodium content is significantly greater than the 230 or whatever it's about. Uh, if you do not reject a, 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 the null hypothesis on a two-tailed test, then you just say I was unable to show that the, let's say on this problem, the average sodium content is significantly different than 230. I was unable. Okay, again, do not reject your unable to show the alternate. I was unable to show that it's significantly, you don't want to say significantly not equal to. Okay, I was unable to show that it was significantly different than 230. Okay, now, same way if you don't reject it, uh, the, if you do not reject the null hypothesis and you're dealing with a two tailed test and the test statistics on the left hand side, uh, negative. Okay, still you just say, I was unable to show it was significantly different than whatever you're dealing with, like 230 milligrams. Now, if you reject it on the left-hand side, the test statistic is negative, then you would summarize in the direction of the rejection. If you summarize it on the left-hand side, it would be significantly less. So we would say at the 0.1 or 0.05 or whatever alpha level you're dealing with, I was able to show that the uh, average sodium content is significantly less than 230. Now let me show you how that works. Let's say that the average sodium content uh, uh, it's claimed to be 230, but let's say it's, let's make it just a little bit less, 229, okay? Well, that's going to be a do not reject. So we would summarize this by saying at the 0.1 alpha level, I was unable to show that the average sodium content is significantly less than, or significantly different than 230, since you did not reject it. Just like if it was 231, a little bit higher, we would say I was unable to show that it was significantly different than 231 if we're doing a two-tailed test. But just like if we summarize it when it was up higher, like a 233, and said it was significantly greater because the test statistic was positive, bigger than the critical value, and we rejected it on the right-hand side, and we say it's significantly greater on this two-tailed test, well, if this would have been lower and we rejected it, see, look at this test statistic, it's negative, we would say at the 0.1 alpha level, I was able to show that the uh, average sodium content per bowl of cereal for this brand of cereal is significantly less than 230 milligrams. Now, where is that rejection region? It's on the left-hand side. Let's look at this like from negative 3 to 3. Way out here, this spec on the left-hand side, that's your test statistic. And we reject it on the left-hand side, so we're able to say that it's significantly less than 230. And you can see this better if I looked at this, let's say, from negative 3 up to maybe negative... Uh, Oh, 1.5 or so, and there's your rejection region zoomed up on it, and there's your test statistic right there. So it's significantly less at this point. So that's the uh, how those summaries go. Now, the most significant alpha level, I talked about that, I think, on the first video for this chapter, but the most significant alpha level is the lowest standard alpha level. What are your standard alpha levels? Well, they're 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0 0.001. Okay, that's the only ones we're using in this class. And uh, if you cannot reject the, uh, well, it's the smallest standard alpha level that you can reject the null hypothesis. So if you can reject it at 0.1, 
and you can reject it at 0.05, then the, uh, the, the smaller one is the most significant alpha level. So that would be 0.05. If you can reject it at 0.1, but you can't at 0.05, then the most significant alpha level is 0.1, uh, smallest one that you can reject. Now, if you cannot reject the null hypothesis at the 0.1 alpha level, then there is no standard alpha level that you can reject the null hypothesis, and you would just be unable to show the alternate hypothesis. That would be your summary. I was unable to show whatever the alternate's about. If you can't reject it at 0.1, don't go any higher than that.